have unreasonable TBRs. <laughs> now that Wheel of Time is over, you know, I got nothing but time. From one cat lady to another, and then the book that no one has seen, no one knows about this one. Okay, um, October TBR. If you've been around my channel for a while, then you should be well aware that October is when I have unreasonable TBRs. <laughs> Cause I'm, I really love spooky season and I really love getting into spooky season and part of that is making my reading spooky. And so I kind of like store up and save up and look for all the spooky reads for October and then unreasonably put them all on my TBR. There are books that like I wanted to put on my TBR and decided no that was unreasonable, but this was doable. Anyway, I do have four books on here that I did not choose because I'm doing another TBR swap. So that's, um, yeah, because I definitely have time for that. Uh, time's a wasting, um, and I need to get busy reading these books. So I better tell you about them real quick. And then we'll see at the end of the month how many I actually got through. Now that Wheel of Time's over, you know, I got nothing but time. Okay, so as I said, I'm doing a TBR swap um, with Mara from Books Like Whoa. Um, when I visited, when we had our little trip, which everyone except for me vlogged, so you've probably heard about this from everyone except for me. <laughs> I was like, this is vacation. I'm not doing anything. Although I did attempt to like stay on top of Wheel of Time during that trip and unsuccessfully. Anyway, Mara gave me the books that she picked for me when I was there. I was supposed to bring hers, but I didn't think I could fit them in my bag. I was able to fit her. Yes, now is not the time. You want to get sprayed? I let you stay out here, but you're making me regret that. Yes. Do you want to get sprayed? Yeah, that's why you like this. Curtains are not toys. Uh, anyway, where was I? Yeah, so the, I was supposed to bring Mara's books with me. I didn't think I could fit them. In fairness, um, I had hardcovers. None of the books, uh, one of them is hardcover, but they were just like bulkier. Um, so I probably could have fit them in my bag if I'd absolutely had no choice. But I also like they're for someone else. So if I crush them, I feel really bad. Whereas the books Mara gave to me, I wouldn't, I don't want to crush them. But if something were to happen, God forbid, it's my fault. It's my books. It's whatever. Anyway, I was able to transport them just fine. She has received her books from me in the mail. So that's all taken care of. And then we're going to do a live chat. Like that's what, like the way that I do it with Hillary. We're not vlogging. We're doing live chats because that's how I prefer to do it. So if you're swapping with me, we're doing live chats. <laughs> um, we haven't set a definite date on that. Um, I, I'm feeling like probably sometime in November, um, depending on how quickly we get through these books. Um, Cause she doesn't do TBRs. The books that Mara chose for me that, yeah, they do still have sticky notes are as follows. Oh, also I thought we were doing four books. She thought we were doing three. So she actually only had three for me in Nashville and I told her I was like well I have four for you so she mailed me one of them so well I didn't actually get all of these in Nashville so if you've seen a vlog where I had received the books you won't have seen one of these haha <laughs> new information the four books that she picked for me are Slave to Sensation by Nalini Singh which is the first in the Psy Changeling series Mara is always talking about the Psy Changeling books so for that reason alone I am intrigued to at least have like context for like what she's talking about and like she was like doing a whole podcast about these books. I know she like loves these books. I worry for our friendship because I, I, I highly doubt this will be a new favorite, but I, I could be wrong. I did not think that I would love Tessa Dare and here we are. So who's to say, but I certainly would never see a book with this cover in the store and go, ooh, getting that. So um, I, I think it's, it's, urban fantasy paranormal romance i think that's i think those are those are the categories but mara has frequently talked about the world building in these books being actually quite ingenious so i look forward to that and then we'll just sort of skim the nsfw bits then um from one cat lady to another she got me the traveling cat chronicles by hiro arakawa translated by philip gabriel this is a, just a sweet little book um in terms of just the look of it <laughs> and her note is to make you feel something I mean, I feel things like rage, um, irritation, disappointment. Um, anyway, so I hope I like this just because it's so cute. Then I actually went, because we visited a lot of bookstores in Nashville, and I'd actually, the very morning before she gave me these books, I had been looking at this next one because the spine is like very like metallic and shiny. And I had like picked it up out of the book or off the bookshelf and had been like, ooh, what's this shiny pretty book? Uh, oh, I won't get it. 
And then, like, fast forward to an hour or two later, and I get it <laughs> from Mara. It's like, oh, it's a good thing I didn't buy it. Anyway, that is Barrow of Winter by H.M. Long. And I think this is related to the book Hall of Smoke, which I have not read either. Um, but it was kind of on my radar. Oh, yeah, Hall of Smoke is on the back, so that is accurate. But Mara DNF'd this book, <laughs> but she said that might mean that I like it <laughs> because I'm so unpredictable slash sometimes have the opposite taste. So uh, kind of like with the cat book, I mean, this is a real pretty book. It caught my eye in the bookstore and I am a cover shopper. All the covers do let me down a lot. Yeah, so hope I, I hope I like it, but Mara DNF'd it, so friendship is not at stake here. And then the book that no one has seen, no one knows about this one, the fourth and final is A Morbid Taste for Bones by Ellis Peters, the first chronicle of Brother Cadfell. I know there's a, a long-running British series, like a TV series that's based on these. I've never actually watched it though. I watch a ton of British murder mysteries, but not that one. So I'm familiar with this like as a character, but I, yeah, I've never, like I wouldn't be spoiled for this if any of the episodes are based on this book. I haven't seen them. And it is like medieval times, um, murder mysteries. And was it Mara said something? This was the one she mailed to me, so it's an Amazon note. It says, the first in a cozy mystery series that is widely considered to be historically accurate, she puts in quotes, because Mara, Mara doesn't believe in historical accuracy. Um, seems like it would be a good fit for you <laughs> because of how much I harp on historical accuracy. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to this. A cozy murder mystery that's historically accurate does sound up my alley. So yeah, at some point in the near future, we'll do like I do with Hillary, where, um, I'm sorry, with Bookborn. <laughs> Mara will come onto my channel to talk about the books that I picked for her. And I will go on tomorrow's channel to talk about these books that she chose for me. Okay, well, on then to the books that I'm inflicting on myself. Well, one of them is being inflicted on me by my patrons. But otherwise, the books that I'm inflicting on myself. Christina Henry's Horseman, which is a retelling of The uh, Legend of Sleepy Hollow, which I have read twice. Um, I, picked, I liked Christina Henry. I love Christina Henry's Lost Boy, which is a retelling of Peter Pan. And this I heard about from a friend and was intrigued and was like, well, that sounds good for spooky season. So I grabbed it. Um, and I, I hope I like it. Next up, um, my patrons and I are reading the Hornblower books, and we are now on Lieutenant Hornblower, or as the British would have it, Lieutenant Hornblower. Hornblower. As I said in other videos, I love the adaptations, the, the ones with Yoan Gruffid, and I am enjoying the books. So we'll be reading and chatting about this book um, in October. Next up, Blades and Bodice Rippers is back. We are dressing up for, I mean, we always dress up now, but we are dressing up for Halloween. And the chat will be on Bethany's channel. And the chat will be The Magic Toy Shop by Angela Carter, which is a book that I already owned because I had already been planning to read it at some point. So I'm quite happy to have it be chosen. I don't know that I will like it, but it was something that I'd already been meaning to read. So I didn't have to go and buy anything because I already had it. This is a cute little cover. Um, I suspect it will be a um a cute but creepy read possibly i don't know i've never read any angela carter before i've heard good things though so and it's not terribly long which is always good news the book that my patrons chose for me to read and vlog for them is not at all a spooky season book but whatever that's what they wanted <laughs> children of gods and fighting men by shauna lawless i thought this was actually from just having seen the cover around i thought it was like a norse viking kind of thing it's actually irish um the oh well it's the viking king of dublin so I guess I was right, but it's predominantly Irish folklore, I believe. Any whoosies, I guess the sequel is already out, Words of Kings and Prophets. So if I like it, I can get the other one. The cover's cool. The original cover is green, but I don't know if I'm going to like this. And the hardcover is expensive everywhere, um, even Amazon. Well, and with the cheap paperback, because I'm not paying $30 for a book that I might hate. And I do hate a lot of books. Now we're getting into all the spooky season, well... Let's just skip ahead for a second so I can actually say that and it'd be true. We are truly concluding the Wisher series with Season of Storms on Chapter 3 Podcast. This is the only one that I've never read before. So I am probably most excited about this one because it's new to me. Never read it before. Don't know how I'm going to like it. I have trepidation. I doubt it will be my favorite in the whole Wisher series, but stranger things have happened. And I certainly do like this cover well. The art is not amazing, but the color... Certainly better than the Purple Lady of the Lake. So anyway, that's the last not spooky season book. The rest are all books that I want to read for spooky season. Starting with Joyland by Stephen King, because I am kind of obsessed with like creepy carnivals as like a Halloween vibe. People always do like haunted houses, which is fine. I have some haunted house books, but I really like eerie carnivals as a vibe. And there's not actually that much I like to read. I have already read, I read a couple years ago, Something Wicked This Way Comes, but like that's what I mean. I want books that have a this, something, this, something Wicked This Way Comes vibe and aesthetic. 
So anyway, I was like on the hunt for that. And Joyland was on a bunch of lists. So I picked that up. I'd heard of it, obviously. It's by the one and only Stephen King. I do like the cover. And um, it, it certainly seems to fit the vibe I'm looking for. We'll see if I like it. Maybe I'll actually read this. I always put Carrie on my TBR and I never actually end up reading it. We'll see if I do better with Joyland. Um, then while I was hunting for a, a Something Wicked This Way Comes-esque story, um, I did find This Is Not That, but also by Ray Bradbury, The October Country, which is a series of stories and it's illustrated. And it isn't necessarily carnivals, but this looked like it would be up my alley and the right kind of vibe for me generally. So I got this and actually the this, actually this and Joyland was sent to me by a patron because I put all the books I was finding on my wish list and they were promptly sent to me, which was very, very nice. Um, yeah, so I'm quite excited about this. Um, I, re I had thought about um, reading Hyde. I think it's called by Kirsten White, um, but I don't already own it and I have lots of other books on my TBR so I didn't go out and buy it, but I do want to read that for the same reason. Anyway, um, back to what I actually have. Suddenly a Murder by Lauren Munoz. Um, I kept seeing this pop up on my feed because I think it was published in the US already and it's now being published in the UK for the first time is what I think is why it was suddenly coming up on my feed. Um, this is also a really different cover from the other cover and I like this one a lot better. Well, I actually don't like this one a ton better but it made me more intrigued about what the book would be, if that makes sense. The other cover, it just gives a really different impression of what type of book it is. And I don't know which one is more accurate. I guess I'll find out now. And then I'll let you know <laughs> which was more accurate. So yeah, I don't actually love the whole like people on the cover thing, but like the, the fact that like, they, it was comped to Knives Out and it has like people in a bookshelf -y dark house and I'm like, oh, that's the vibe I want for sure. Everyone has a secret. Everyone has a motive. Only one brought a knife to the party. Oh yeah, I meant to put um, the second, what's it called? Yeah, I meant to put the Hawthorne Legacy on my TBR because I started reading it last year and never finished it and now it's not on my TBR. Oh well, maybe I'll read it. Anyway, yes, yeah, so this, okay. Um, sounds like a good time. Then there's a new book out by Stephen King that I'm interested in and learned that it was, that it's like a part of a series that you have to have read. You can't like, it's not like technically part of a series but you can read it on its own. Everyone says you have to have read the other ones to get it. Um, and that's like the Mr. Mercedes books. The new book, I don't know what it's called. The new book is Holly and I love the cover. Anyway, so to read Holly, if I wish to, I have to read the Mr. Mercedes books. So I bought all three, which is a totally reasonable thing to do. And I've put the first one on my TBR, Mr. Mercedes. So I've been pretty consistent about having a Stephen King on my October TBR for the last few years. So I don't always read all the Kings that are on my TBR. Carrie keeps getting bumped, but I do read a King usually. Next up is a book that's another souvenir from Nashville. Um, I think it was somebody when we were at a bookstore, I think it was Mara, had grabbed this on the shelf and I was like, ooh, what is that? I, I guess I'll spend actual sticker price on a book that I could buy at home for cheaper just cause it looks so cool. And that is Murder Your Employer by Rupert Holmes, The McMaster's Guide to Homicide. This is just such a pretty book and it's got the word murder in the title. It's been blurred a whole bunch. R.L. Stein, Gregory Maguire. Oh, my receipt is still in here, as is I got it from Parnassus, in case you were wondering. Gotta buy local, right? It's not local to me, but. So yeah, um, I, I hope it's good. It's, it's certainly a pretty book. <laughs> then recently I read the first book in this series, The Library of the Dead, and I thought I should read the second one for spooky season. I think the third one just came out, and that is Our Lady of Mysterious Ailments. Can magic heal their maladies? I really enjoyed the first one. I've heard good things about the second one. And it seems, like, as I said, a good time of year to be reading a book like this one. Next up is my apparently now annual Grady Hendrix. Although, is that true? No, I read Southern Book Club's Guide, missed a year. Last year I read, um, what's it called? The store one, Horror Store. And this year I'm gonna read How to Sell a Haunted House, which again, I love the cover so much. Also, I really like his books so far, the two that I've read and him tackling a haunted house sounds charming. I'm very, very much looking forward to this and is it illustrated? What are these dark pages? Is it spoilery? Should I not look? Oh, I guess the there's just section breaks with a giant dark black page. You see why I thought it was illustrated. Um, yeah, hopefully he's three for three, but I guess we'll find out. And then the last three are all Book of the Month Club books. One of them was my actual Book of the Month. I don't remember which one it was. <laughs> and then I got a bunch of add-ons. I was like, I should cancel. And then instead I got four books. So I think this one is my actual book of the month and I have started reading it already. Um, and that is The Stranger Upstairs by Lisa M. Matlin. And I believe this is a debut and it's not very long. I'm not in love with it yet, but it's also very early to be saying one way or the other. I don't hate it either. That's the first one. Then uh, this was another book of the month for this for, for the month of, of October. Um, but I, well, I guess either 
this, that one or this one could count as my book of the month, but I think I picked the stranger one first. So this would be my add-on, um, The River We Remember by William Kent Kruger. I think this one also sounded kind of like eerie a little bit. Our lives and the lives of those who we love merge to create a river whose current carries us forward from our beginning to our end because we are only one part of the whole. The river each of us remembers is different and there are many versions of the stories we tell about our past. I think there's a death. That's why I picked. A spellbinding mystery and masterful portrait of mid-century American life. So I don't know. It's lit Vicky, but it seemed like it might be like haunting, which, you know. Then another thriller that I've had decent luck with, um, None of This is True by Lisa Jewell. I also love this cover. It's giving, I know it's not, I think it's just like suburban America, but it looks so like Amsterdam to me. Any whoosies, like I said, it's a thriller. It's October, Lisa Jewell. I read The Family Upstairs? Was that what it was called? I don't know. I've read another Lisa Jewell book and I liked it well enough. I think I might have read another Lisa Jewell after that. I don't know. But I was like, sure, this too. And then also, 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 mainly because I loved this cover and then looked at the description, I was like, I don't know, sure. Bright Young Women by Jessica Knoll. Um, it's got very much like a pop art Andy Warhol thing going on, which I quite like. But yeah, there's, um, it's like true crime, kind of a, about a serial killer from the 70s. It's, it's categorized as thrills and chills. So I think... I'm on the right track. Editing me here. I knew I forgot something <laughs> when I filmed the TBR. Um, so the things that I forgot um, were the book that is the patron buddy read for October and that is Jekyll and Hyde which I have never read before um, and it's extremely short so thank you for that. And then the year of Gaiman does continue even though I am so extremely behind on posting the Gaiman videos which is why I even forgot to put this on my TBR. But th there's just gonna be like back-to-back -back Gaiman content coming to you that no one asked for. Anyway, trigger warning is the October book and the videos and things are coming to you eventually. Anyway, um, back to wherever I was in the actual video. And then possibly the Hawthorne Legacy, which I meant to put on my TBR. And I guess Carrie? Watch, that's what it takes. I need to not put Carrie on my TBR in order to actually read Carrie in October. But we'll see. We'll see at the end of October what I actually got through. Obviously the like buddy reads I have to read, but otherwise, you know, it's open season. Anyway, let me know what you're reading this spooky season. If you're reading these, if you already read these, if you hate these, if you love these, whatever you want, let me know. I post videos when I can. <laughs> So like and subscribe, join my Patreon if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you when I see you. Bye.